Okay, so this is day 19. We are at the, was it Elkhorn Hot Springs mm -hmm. in Montana. And uh, we left Chalice, Idaho this morning, which is on uh, Idaho 75 and US 93. And uh, didn't get to enjoy their hot springs. So wanted to get here in time to enjoy the hot springs here, which are like a big giant swimming pool. So this was just mostly a highway day. Um, really nice highway riding. I mean, just really cool canyons, just following the Salmon River. Uh, eventually we got up to, uh, I don't know what the name of the town is, but it hit Idaho 28. I want to say it's Salmon, but I don't think it is. Um, but anyway, yeah, we got to Salmon and we turned south on uh, 28 down to, I wouldn't call it a town. There was like a ranger station there for the Lewis and Clark Trail that goes up and over the Bitterroot Mountains. Uh, it's called Tendoy. And uh, once we turned onto that road, it turned to dirt. It started out wide, graded, easy. Um, and then we passed a sign that said Road Narrows. <laughs> and basically became a one lane road. And it was up, down, back and forth, up, down, back and forth. And, um, you know, a lot of five, 10 mile an hour corners. Sarah had a car come around the corner and uh, fortunately she was doing the deep and wide thing. And so the car was able to hug the inside of the corner and Sarah was able to go around wide and she didn't panic. So uh, no problems there. And then uh, that went for quite a while back into the valley and then it started climbing. And of course, right then we started having communicator issues. Uh, you know, last night my commuter cater took, I don't know, 10 minutes to charge and halfway through the day it was dead. Um, Sarah had stopped at one point after a pretty long climb and I don't think she realized I was right behind her because we couldn't talk to each other. But she was doing real good. I was following her, just watching her. Uh, probably a good thing that I couldn't talk to her so I could just leave her alone, let her focus on doing what she was doing. And then we finally caught up and passed Daniel and, uh, she had stopped and I stopped and we were trying to figure out the communicator issue and she told me it was dead. I actually, she was using mine um, because whenever the kids got separated from me, they couldn't talk to each other. So with her using mine and me using hers, they were still able to talk to each other. But it's just a pain because every time we got separated, I was having trouble getting reconnected. Sarah was having trouble connecting. The communicator kept shutting off. Um, just really annoying. So at that point, Daniel actually got a, uh, I got a neck warmer right here. Yeah, it feels good. Um, Daniel grabbed one of the charger battery things that we have and plugged it into the communicator so that it would just run off that external battery. And that worked pretty good. And we were able to do the rest of the climb and the rest of the climb started getting pretty steep. Uh, had some pretty good switchbacks in it, you know, first gear, five, 10 miles an hour washboard, ruts, loose rocks, steep drop-offs, you know, the works. Uh, stuff that I've seen real experienced guys get kind of nervous about going up. And Sarah just followed me up. And then of course, epic view and I have to stop and take pictures. I can't help myself. So she just went on right by me and Daniel followed her and I uh, took my pictures. And then eventually uh, we reached the summit. I think it's Lim L E M H I, however they say it, Lemi Pass or something. It's one of the passes that Lewis and Clark supposedly came over with. Uh, what's her name? Sacagawea. Sacagawea, right? Um, so that west side of the pass was very challenging. Um, once you get to the top, the views are really epic, and then we took a wrong turn because there's like five rows leading away from the summit. And I think this one went down to a campground. Of course, by the time I realize they're going the wrong way and I'm still at the top taking pictures, boop, they go out of communicator range so I can't tell them to turn around. So I was getting ready to start charging down the hill to try to catch them and get them turned around because I knew Sarah wouldn't be too wild about having to do another climb. And uh, Daniel comes cranking around the corner and I'm like, well, where's Sarah? And he's like, well, she's down there at the campground. There's a nice big turnaround. I was like, okay, well, cool. I'll just go down there and turn around too. And then we got back to the top, got going the right direction. And uh, the run down the east side, we had like one 
big horseshoe type switchback, you know, where you can see it for a long way and then you bank a 180 and it goes a long way. Make a left turn and then it just runs down the length of the valley with some curves and stuff. And it was a lot of fun. And then eventually we passed through this ranch that was pretty cool. It looked like a place where you could ride horses and stay in cabins and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the road opened up, got pretty straight. Daniel took off like a jackrabbit, of course. And, uh, you know, I passed there and took off, and I was doing at least 75 <laughs> trying to catch him. But he was only going 60. Yeah, so anyway, that was a pretty fun road. And then uh, we hit a highway. Um, can't see what the highway it is on the GPS here. Um, highway 324 on the Montana side. So, um, looks like I'm losing my light. I'm going to go invisible here in a second. Daniel's failing his fire duties. We need light. Aziz, light! You should let it burn <laughs> there we go. Um, so anyway, we got on that highway, ran for a while, and then we turned north on, um, what is this road? road. Bannock Bench Road, which is... Chunky gravel, a little bit of sand, straight as an arrow, lots of ups and downs, you know, big whoop type things. Not like whoops, like dirt track riding whoops, but just big, you know, up, down, up, down, zero G type stuff, and then heavy G stuff uh, with just big chunky rocks. And uh, Daniel took off again. Sarah and I were hanging back, and we were running about... Uh, I don't know, 45 miles an hour or so. She was doing real well. And that road went for about 15 miles before we finally got to a highway. And uh, I wanna say Highway 278, which is a really nice road. I mean, real well paved and it starts heading up into the mountains. And then uh, we got on Pioneer Mountain Scenic Byway, which is also paved, very pretty. And that starts heading up into the mountains and takes you right to Elkhorn Springs. Of course, I didn't see the side. We blew right past it, right as the road started becoming a whole bunch of 25 mile an hour curves, beautiful pavement, climbing up the mountain real fast. So we got to the top of that, turned around and came back down to get to the lodge and found the lodge. And of course, you're not gonna believe it, the lodge is closed, the restaurant's closed because they're having plumbing issues. So no dinner. I was looking forward to a nice big steak dinner, maybe a dinner salad and a potato. But uh, that's just kind of the way our luck seems to be going on this trip. So, uh, yeah, the lodge is closed. They'll have some kind of a cold breakfast in the morning with just cereal, milk, and I don't know, maybe some biscuits or something. But, uh, you know, not their normal kind of breakfast. But the hot pools, the hot springs were open. And uh, we got in, got our tents set up. Uh, it's only 25 bucks a night for the three of us. And then uh, went on down to the pools and just soaked for, I don't know, three hours, two and a half, three hours. And now it's cold. Uh, there's a lot of people still down there chilling, hanging out. It's a real popular spot to hang out in the evening. You know, they sell beer at the little shack and they got snacks and Gatorade and all kinds of stuff. And they got a sauna and they got the hot tub. They got two pools, one pool is bigger. And that's supposedly the cold pool. And then they got a smaller pool, and that's the hot pool. And then they got the actual sauna. Um, but they got nice dressing rooms. They actually do have showers, and they do have a bathroom. And it is going to be open all night, so we can walk down there if we really need to. Um, they weren't doing their regular dinner, so they had pizza by the slice available at the little office down by the pools. And um, I think Sarah and Daniel both got themselves a slice. I didn't... I don't do red pasta sauce at night because that's a disaster. And, uh, oh my God, now it's a full on bonfire. Yeah, my kneecaps are burning. Uh, yeah, we may have to scoot back here. Um, so, good day of riding. I mean, the dirt, all the dirt was uh, technical. Nobody had any issues. Nobody broke a bike. Uh, nobody fell down. I don't even think Sarah had any real bad bobbles or anything. I didn't see anything. Sarah she disagrees. Sarah disagrees because she thinks every corner is a bobble. 
but I did a lot of writing behind her today, shot a lot of video. You know, I haven't edited any of the video because we just haven't had a real good place to do that. Um, I think once she actually sits and sees some of the video of herself riding, she might change her mind, you know? But that's just so time consuming to do that. Um, yeah, so good trip. And we're just sitting here trying to warm up right now because it's getting really cold. I bought a whole box of those little hand warmer, foot warmer things that, at the gas station this morning uh they had a box sitting there on the shelf and i just grabbed the entire box and bought all of them uh, they were like a dollar a piece so we're hoping those will get kind of warm because it got quite chilly last night and uh like i said i got that pocket warmer thing right here and i had it tucked down inside of my neck to try to keep me heated up but uh i don't know what we're doing tomorrow i haven't looked at the routes in a while we're just going to keep going north and uh i don't know if it involves dirt um i think it does involve one gravel road that i rode when i was up here back in 2013 maybe 2017 with roger for the best of montana ride and he and i split off from the rest of the group and did some stuff that was pretty cool but uh anyway we'll see how that goes so that's all for tonight talk to you later bye